Hi you guys, welcome back to Willie's American Guitars video series. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we get stuff in sometimes in groups, and, and I've said this before, so you, I will sit down myself and, and write down, you know, copy of what it is and how clean it is and what's been changed and try to convey as best we can. We hate when we see listings on guitars that are just like two sentences long. Uh, Gibson 330 and the price but um, we try to get into the detail and describe anything that might be out of place so I'm gonna walk you through this latest catch and uh, show you some things this is a 1968 Gibson Birdland and you can see it has a top crack here that's been fixed these are all solid wood hand carved guitars the Birdland is a guitar that is basically an L5 so all carved back Carved top, very fancy, double bound, triple bound. There is seven layers of binding in the top, ebony board, except it has a shorter scale length. The idea for this is that you can use, um, it's good for chords or melody lines and your reach is better. So de developed by Hank Garland uh, and Billy Bird, who were both heroes in 1956. These came out in 1956. This was top of the line, the most expensive guitar in the price range. When I was a kid, I never got it. But once you play when you get it, it is a shorter scale length. It's about the same, give or take, as a Mustang. But just this super high-end guitar. They made a lot of variances of these, too. There's some weird stuff with this because they're also mostly custom ordered. They do not make them um, today in the factory. I got this that's coming in. This is a 59 Les Paul Jr. Now, this 59 Les Paul Jr. had a tremolo on the top. You'll see that it's relatively common that the store you bought it from would have you add a tremolo onto the top, and that tremolo that they put on there is a maestro, and it's useless. Useless. So, what do you do? You take it off. You can put it on for decoration, but we're selling this guitar. 59 is a great year for Gibsons. It's the legendary year of the burst, and they have these big necks. That's the neck everybody seems to want these days. So, a 59 Junior, a double cut Junior, this is a great investment. Let me say that again. These are great investments, meaning they'll go up in value. There, I'm out on a limb on that, but they have for the past 40 years gone up 10 to 15% a year. They're on the climb again. So when that hits the site, I don't expect it to last very long. I've got a 1968 ES330. These are fantastic. I wonder if I have it. It's in tune. And... These are great guitars. P90. The great thing about these, as I've said before, is you can play them at home. They're fully hollow. The 330, unlike the 335, is fully hollow. This one has hints of flame. When I write that down in the copy, what I mean by hints of flame is you might not notice it from a distance, but when you climb on the guitar, you can really see there is this figuring in the wood. And that is a beautiful, clean, original, one-owner guitar. Um, then, but wait, there's more. Then, just recently, I took in this. This is a 1963 Strat. It's been refinished long ago, and old refins will have more value than something done, and it's got to have this kind of natural-looking vibe to it. You can't take and relic an old guitar and get the same value. This old refin, although it doesn't look factory stock because it's a little light around the edges, is still a great two-tone finish on here, a great vibe. The pickups have been changed, it's routed underneath here, and it's probably already sold. Something like this is about $6,500. And then there's this. This is a 1970 Strat. If you're a Hendrix fan, these four bolt Strats from 68, 69, 70 are really in demand because it's very much terribly out of tune. Sorry about that. Um, all these guitars came in on the same day. So um, this is an all straight guitar. This is an all straight four bolt big headstock Jimi Hendrix looking Stratocaster. The, the reason guys chase these is because the pickups are underwound. At the time they were trying to avoid distortion. In 70 there was no master volume amplifiers. They would 
advertise another step towards distortion free performance so by underwinding the pickups a little bit they got a little more clarity and these pickups are famous you hear it on any Hendrix record you take this pickup and diamond amp and it just sounds great but they got a really great clean sound um, so a, uh, I, I think this is a 69, it might be a 70, I haven't opened it, I've only owned it a few hours, but this is a really cool guitar. And by the way, both these strats are ultra light. So there you go, we've got some stuff, it all seems to come in from the mid 60s, uh, a really cool jazz guitar, a really cool Hendrix area guitar, and there's more to come, more videos right after this. Don't go away. First, a word from our sponsor.